In an absolutely bonkers twist you'd swear was made up, we dive headfirst into the saga of Ko vs. Ko, where the grandmother is throwing some serious shade on her grandson's DNA because of her daughter's, let's call it, free-spirited love life. And as if that's not spicy enough, she's also campaigning for her daughter to win a free pass to parenting boot camp. Buckle up, folks. This roller coaster is just leaving the station. Today we have the case of Ko v. Ko, mother versus daughter. Uh, Miss Ko, you say you're here today because your daughter is an out-of-control teenager and she needs help. Furthermore, you claim that uh, you have serious doubts that your daughter's boyfriend, Mr. Boyce, is father of your seven-month-old grandson. You say Mr. Boyce has been a good father to the baby, but that your daughter has numerous sexual partners. Now, just when you thought we'd hit peak drama, the mom lays out her daughter's rap sheet of teenage rebellion. We're talking brawls in the schoolyard and a scuffle with a cop. Yep, it seems respect for authority is on back order for this one. But wait, there's more? Fights at school, hitting a police officer, not once, but twice. She hitting a police her. officer. She punched her twice. I get the phone call to go up to the school. I get there. I was thankful that I knew this police officer. He looks at me and he says, this is your daughter. He says, I could take her to jail right now. She could have a felony. You think you've seen it all? Oh, please. We're about to dive into a saga of home-wrecking proportions, with our leading lady turning their humble abode into a demolition derby. Windows shattered, mom's car redecorated with the rebel without a cause look. And just when you think that's gotta be it, there's another twist waiting. Made a phone call saying I and my girlfriend had jumped on her because she still did not want to follow house rules. All I asked her to do was not disrespect the house. Don't bring the drama to the house. You brought drama to the house. That's not you the made truth. a phone call saying, my mother and her girlfriend just jumped on me. Y'all, you come mess them I up. I said her girlfriend just jumped on me, and I did have but somebody that wasn't come true. over there. The plot thickens like grandma's gravy at Thanksgiving as we unearth the roots of this family feud. Picture this, a childhood spent with dad because mom was offering the role of the mysterious absent character, which has left more than just a bit of bitterness and betrayal in the air. The drama, it's not just simmering, it's boiling over. Children grow with their mother, not their father. I grew up with my father because due to the fact she abandoned me when I was two I years did old. I not abandon you. I was told she dropped me off when I was two years old and never came back. Oh. And the reason I believed it is because I haven't seen her until I got in my teenage. You didn't have so much as a visitation. Oh yes, I had visitation rights. She came over on. I never and missed so a And so did beat. you ever have a positive relationship? No, not really. Then, out of left field, we swivel the spotlight to the kiddo's daddy drama. In a heartfelt confession, both mom and daughter spill the beans on the daughter's eclectic taste in men, leaving us with a cliffhanger lineup of potential papas. But just when you're trying to keep up, they hit you with a plot twist you never saw coming. But it's because not just one guy. That's what she's saying. But it's not just one guy. There was somebody else in the picture. So, mom, you're saying she was sleeping with multiple guys. I know that there was someone else. Now, how many more it was, I'm not for sure. But I do know that there was someone else. And I find now she's pregnant. I go to the guy. I go to Larry. I say to Larry, look, as Zaire's mother, I'm gonna keep it real with you. As the emotional stakes skyrocket, enter Mr. Boyce, the boyfriend on the verge of a nervous breakdown, clinging to hope like a soap opera star to a script. He waxes poetic about fatherhood and personal growth amidst a sea of daddy doubts. And just when your heart's about to burst, the story takes a leap into the unknown. Mr. Boyce, please come and step to the podium. We know that today we're here to determine the paternity of this particular child, but we also know that this child is very important to you. Am I correct? Yes. From the beginning, I knew it was a possibility, but at the same time, you know what I'm saying? He, he, made, he made me grow more, you know what I'm saying, since he's been around. Brace for impact, because we're reaching a crescendo that'll knock your socks off. The paternity reveal party has a bouncer. When it comes to baby Christian, Mr. Boyce, you are not the father. You're his father. Yeah, I am. Yes, yes, you are. I'm still You okay? I know this was not the way probably any of you wanted this to turn out. All right, strap in for a wild ride, folks. Can you believe the tension here? Introduction and stakes. In the left corner, we have Ms. Loman, ready to rumble in court to prove her fiancé, Mr. Mitchell, is indeed the biological father of her superstar daughter, London. The plot, their future matrimonial bliss hangs by the threat of a DNA test. If Mr. Mitchell isn't the dad, well, the wedding's canceled, and it's going to be more awkward than a family reunion after a game of Monopoly. Mr. Mitchell, on the other hand, is riddled with doubts and backed by his cousin, who's pretty sure this is a plot twist from a daytime soap opera. Grab your popcorn 
you're not going to want to miss what comes next. Ms. Lohman, you are in court today hoping and praying your fiance, Mr. Mitchell, is the biological father of your daughter, London, and you and your mother are here to prove it. You say today's DNA results will determine the future of your together, is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Mitchell, you say nothing would make you happier than finding out you are London's biological father, but you are in court today believing there is no way you are. The saga thickens, and I'm not just talking about the plot, background of the relationship. Ms. Lohman gives us the lowdown on their love story, starting from innocent high school friendships to it's complicated. She spills the tea on how they went from passing notes to passing the remote, especially after Mr. Mitchell moved in to dodge the drama at his own home. And just when you think it's going to be a smooth ride into sunset and happy endings, the story veers off into another soap opera episode. When me and Jonathan got together, I was, you know, I was very happy. We got engaged January of last year, and if London is not to become Mr. Mitchell, then our wedding is going to be off, and that's going to, you know, it's really going to upset me. All right, and how is it affecting your relationship now? Me and Mr. Mitchell, we fight all the time about, you know, me telling Mr. Mitchell that London is his. And Turn up the heat because things are getting spicy. The relationship turns romantic. Picture this, Mr. Mitchell and Ms. Lohman living under one roof, sparks flying amidst family dinners and laundry days, despite Ms. Lohman juggling another bow on the side. It's like a rom-com, but with more complications and less Hugh Grant charm. The next twist, it's just around the corner and it's juicier than you think. Were you single at that time? No, Your Honor, I had a boyfriend at the time. Moves in, and then what happened? Um, After about two months of him living with me and my family, we were sitting on the couch one day just talking and he kissed me. And and I told him, you know, I have a boyfriend, we can't do this. And he just kind of shrugged it off and said, okay. So at that point, Mr. Mitchell was just your friend? Yes, Your Honor. About a week after that, we were in the pool and we were swimming under the water and he kissed me under the water and I came up and I didn't, I didn't stop it. The paternity doubt. In a plot twist worthy of a telenovela, Ms. Lohman reveals there's another potential daddy in the mix right around the time little London decided to make her grand entrance. With no protection in play, the plot doesn't just thicken, it practically solidifies. But wait, there's more drama on the horizon and it's about to get as tangled as headphones in your pocket. So tell me about what you came to love about Miss Loman. I loved how she did stuff. I liked how she cared for me whenever I didn't have anybody that cared for me. And she said you had a very tough childhood. Is that true, honey? Yes, ma'am. I was abused. I was had to do everything for my family. I raised my three sisters and my brother basically by myself. Seriously, did anyone see this plot twist coming? Physical resemblance and doubts. Ms. Lohman plays detective, pointing out all the ways London is basically a mini Mr. Mitchell from her eye color to her eyelashes. But then she throws in a curveball about timing with her ex, making this paternity puzzle more confusing than a Rubik's Cube. Buckle up, this roller coaster of emotions has a few more loops to go. Everything pointed to Mr. Mitchell. Yes, Your Honor. How do you tell? We were sitting at home and I told him, I was like, there is a possibility that London could be yours and because I looked at the dates and then after she was born I was like Mr. Mitchell she looks just like you I was like she has your eyes the same exact eye color but just because she, she has blue eyes and blonde hair doesn't mean she's fine yes had but same. my ex had light blue eyes Jonathan has dark blue eyes London has dark blue eyes and so all through this pregnancy who's helping you Mr. Mitchell is talk about an emotional whirlwind, bonding with London. Despite the swirling vortex of paternity doubts, Mr. Mitchell steps up like a champ, forming an unbreakable bond with London. It's like watching a feel-good movie, where you're rooting for the underdog, tissues in hand, for happy and sad tears alike. But keep those tissues handy. The drama's about to dial up to 11. Yes, Your Honor. How so? Explain to the court. I love her to death. She's oh. amazing. She's amazing, you said. Yes, Your Honor. He has been there from day one. He takes care of her. He watches her. He he has he he has become so attached to this baby. But the the doubts are there, and it is better for him to know now. It's better for everybody, especially London, to know now if he is in fact for certain her father. Twist turns and a side of manipulation concerns of manipulation. Enter Mr. Mitchell's cousin, the voice of reason, or perhaps the chorus in this Greek tragedy, hinting that Ms. Lohman might be playing 4D chess with everyone's hearts. It's a moment that adds a sprinkle of suspicion to this already spicy story stew. And just when you think you've seen it all, the next revelation is about to leave you absolutely gobsmacked. He's being taken advantage of. I believe that she knows that Jonathan is going to do what is right. He loves the baby and he is going to step up up and be the father that she needs. And I feel like because she knows that, that that is why we are in the situation. Ms. Lohman has chosen Mr. Mitchell yes. as the best of the two options. Right. And for the grand finale, the moment we've all been waiting for, DNA results and reactions. It has been determined by this court. Mr. Mitchell, you are not the father. <laughs> 
Miss Jackson, in all her fury and fabulousness, storms up to her husband's so-called mistress, Miss Lipscomb, armed with nothing but pure sass and a mission to debunk the outrageous claim that the one-month-old fashionista, Baby Courasia, shares DNA with her husband. Miss Jackson is all, if this baby is his, I'm out of here faster than you can say divorce. The audience loses their mind. You learn today that the child is in fact your husband's, your marriage is over. That's right, you're right. You'll be picking your jaw up off the floor. Just outside the queen, her title as the girlfriend, Miss Jackson drops the wife bomb on her, leading to a dramatic reveal of pregnancy by Mr. Jackson. Grab your popcorn. The drama is just getting started. How this roller coaster has more twists than your grandma's spaghetti. Cue the dramatic music as they delve into the saga of BM, baby mama versus wife. It's a wild ride through lies, deceit, and a lack of commitment from Mr. Jackson, who seems to have trouble understanding the concept of honesty and fidelity. Miss Jackson and Miss Lipscomb throw shade like it's sunny in the courtroom, turning the tension up to 11. Brace yourself. It's about to get even going the paternity of little Kiasia into a whirlwind of doubt. The courtroom turns into a datum drama fest as they sift through the potential daddy drama. Your guess is as good as mine on who the father could be. The next piece of evidence will have you screaming at your screen. Did the Hold on to your seats, folks, because what you're about to hear is straight out of a daytime drama. But real life, Miss Hooker, with her mom in tow like a dynamic duo, steps into the spotlight with a bombshell. Mr. Abraham, the late son of the defendant, Miss Baker, is claimed to be the daddy of Miss Hooker's adorable 10-month-old, Kenia. They're not just here for the drama. They want recognition and a big ol' we're sorry for the public snub from Miss Baker's fam. Buckle up. It's going to get wild. Miss Hooker, you are here with your mother because you say the defendant's son, Mr. Abraham, fathered your 10 month old daughter Kanaya. You say that Miss Baker and her family public denial of this child has caused you pain and you are here for an apology and to prove her son is the father. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. In what can only be described as a plot twist you never saw coming, Miss Baker stands her ground, waving the flag for her dearly departed son, challenging the claim that he's the father of Miss Hooker's baby. She's throwing everything but the kitchen sink into proving her son had his doubts, turning this paternity puzzle into a full-blown saga. The air's getting thick with drama, and we're here for it. Mr. Abraham, because tragically, he was killed three months after the birth of this child. You say that before his death, your son expressed great doubt that he was the father of Miss Hooker's baby and you are here to put the lies to rest. Is that yeah, correct? Yes. How have you been affected by Ms. Baker's doubts about Kanaya's paternity? Just when you thought this couldn't get any juicier, Miss Hooker spills the tea on her and Mr. Abraham's love story turned roller coaster ride. From being BFFs to lovers, then kind of sort of co parents without the labels, it's a tale that tugs at the heartstrings. Miss Hooker swears he was her one and only, but folks, the plot is about to thicken with a capital T. Okay, okay. 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 so, Miss Hooker, let me ask you, what was your relationship with Keyshawn? Were you boyfriend and girlfriend? First, we was best friends. Sixth grade year, we was best friends, and then we, we started talking, then we stopped talking, and just like, then, like, we stopped talking, then we started going together for a minute and then like we just when I got pregnant we was just like we all we always talk but we just stopped going, but we still talking though but we just stopped going together like we want boyfriend and girlfriend but then you still talked yeah were you in love or was yeah. this this was your first love yeah the saga dives deeper into the heartache, revealing how this paternity face-off is tearing Miss Hooker and her crew apart. It's more than just drama. It's a full-on emotional earthquake, shaking foundations and leaving Miss Hooker to armor up against the world's chatter. The stage is set for more revelations, and trust me, you'll need tissues. It's her family who makes my daughter feel some type of way. It's not Miss Baker. She was too fat to be his baby. She fat like them, and it's just a whole bunch of stuff. Never from Miss Baker. It's always her family who always have something to say about about my daughter feelings have been hurt. It's always talk about her like she just tramp and I'm like enough. Here comes a heart wrencher. Ms. Baker takes us down a melancholy path, recounting the sad demise of her son, Mr. Abraham, against the backdrop of this paternity quandary. It's a moment that puts the whole drama into perspective, painting a portrait of grief and unresolved questions. The drama's not over though. There's more heart tugging ahead. I'm so very sorry. He just told me to promise him that we was going to get a test done because of what the other young man said. And you know, What did the other young man say? He told Keyshawn that when he wasn't around, he was supposedly sleeping with the night. Miss Hooker, I have to ask you, was there another guy? No, that's why it's funny, because how can somebody tell me who I was sleeping with? 
Just when the audience thought they'd caught their breath, Miss Hooker comes back swinging against those cheating rumors. With her mom by her side, dropping truth bombs about Mr. Abraham's waffling paternity beliefs, it's a defense that adds more spice to this already sizzling story. And guess what? The drama escalates from here. When him and my daughter was arguing, other than that, I have pictures with him laying on her stomach. He had doubts only when he was angry. And I cannot get mad at what he tell his mother or nothing like that. But when he came over there with us, he held the baby, kissed the baby, and loved the baby. He just needs to get the results from Miss Carolyn. It doesn't matter. It's all about her. And he did ask her to get the blood test. For it won't be no doubts on their end about my grandbaby because it's, it's sad now. Hold the phone because the drama meter just broke. Kanaya's absence from her supposed dad's obituary throws gasoline on the already blazing fire between the families. Miss Hooker's feeling more sidelined than ever, but folks, brace yourselves. The juiciest twist is yet to unfold. My mama has a relationship with them. I don't. It may or may not be his. I did not put the baby name in there. That, my mom has to read that obituary. She lost a child. Nobody else lost one. If this baby turned out to be his, that's a that's a death all over again. Do I want my mama to look in there and look at a reminder of a baby that was supposed to be his? No, I do not. Think about my mama feelings. It's a, it don't has nothing to do with her. Just when you think you've seen it all, the DNA results drop with a major scandal. It has been determined by this court. The percentage of relatedness between Ms. Baker, Mr. Abraham, and Kenaya Abraham is 0%. This, this is why right here. Miss Baker, are you all right? Do you need no. to sit down? Do you need it's to sit not. down, ma'am? <laughs> Ms. Baker, the plaintiff, opens her case by stating the outcome of her marriage depends on the DNA results of her three-month-old son, Caleb, whom she insists was fathered by her husband, Mr. Baker. Mr. Baker counters with a medical impossibility claim due to a vasectomy he had 30 years prior, adding that if the results prove Caleb isn't his, he will leave. The tension in their marriage is palpable, underscored by the gravity of the DNA results on their future together. You won't believe what's coming up next? Ms. Baker, you say the fate of your marriage is riding on today's DNA results. You are suing to prove that your three-month-old son, Caleb, was fathered by your husband, Mr. Baker. And Mr. Baker, you say it's medically impossible for you to have a child, and therefore, Caleb cannot be yours. Ms. Baker, you say the relationship truly is on the rocks. At the time I got pregnant, I um, was drinking quite a bit. This next part is a real twist. Mr. Baker details his vasectomy, conducted back in 1991, and emphasizes his belief in its effectiveness by mentioning the improbability of fathering a child post vasectomy based on his research. He recounts his shock upon learning of Ms. Baker's pregnancy, initially doubting the pregnancy test's accuracy and fearing for his wife's health due to possible cancer. This moment underscores Mr. Baker's skepticism and the initial turmoil the unexpected pregnancy caused, highlighting the deep-seated doubts and fears he harbors regarding the paternity of Caleb. Just when you think you've heard it all, wait for what's next. And I don't condone the actions that we took in our relationship. I was married, she was married. You have two people who are in a monogamous relationship come together the way that we did, there's always going to cast doubt on the back of your mind. How do I know she wouldn't do this to me? We did it to each other. And when we did that, we hurt a lot of people. 12 children today, but 11 children were deeply hurt because of the actions that we made. Hold on, it gets even more intriguing. At 45, Ms. Baker's pregnancy is portrayed as nearly miraculous, especially given Mr. Baker's vasectomy and the couple's prior consideration of vasectomy reversal to have a child together. The narrative shifts to a blend of hope and disbelief, illustrating how the pregnancy rekindled their regret of not sharing a biological child. This twist adds a layer of emotional complexity to the story, mixing regret, hope, and the fear of the unknown. But the story takes an even more surprising turn soon. Had instances in your previous marriage... Yes, I do. ...that you said were revealed on the national stage, the limelight? Well, I know that she had went on a very public show. Which show did you go on? The Oprah Winfrey Show. And I wanted you to confirm that because I actually do remember that episode. I remember your husband thought you were a certain amount of money in debt. You were lying and it was, the number was like... Tens of thousands of dollars. Exactly. Yes. Just when you think you've figured it out, Dr. Jamila Gator provides expert testimony on the possibility of fathering a child post-vasectomy, noting that while Mr. Baker's chances were slim, they were not zero. Her input shifts the narrative towards a scientific perspective, offering a glimmer of hope to Ms. Baker's claims and introducing a pivotal point in the case. This expert 
analysis bridges the gap between medical facts and the couple's personal ordeal, setting the stage for the resolution of their paternity dispute. You'll be on the edge of your seat with what comes next. You say that it's medically impossible for you to have fathered this child. Yes, Your Honor. Explain. Back in 1991, when my ex was pregnant with our fourth child, while she was pregnant, I had a vasectomy. And so based upon the research that I have done regarding vasectomy, once the procedure hits the 20 year mark, they literally put it into the realm of impossibility. This revelation is heart-stopping. The climactic reveal of the DNA results confirms. It has been determined by this court, Mr. Baker, you are the father. <laughs> <laughs> Dark versus Bailey. Mr. Dark throws a curveball, accusing Ms. Bailey of playing the field and casting major doubt on the paternity of her nearly a year old son, swearing on his collection of rare sneakers that there's no way he's the dad. Ms. Bailey fires back, insisting Mr. Dark is the one and only father and goes further, labeling him as the king of deadbeats. Strap in, folks, because this drama train is just leaving the station and it's about to pick up some serious speed. Mr. Dark, you say the defendant is a promiscuous liar who broke your heart four years ago, stepping out on your then relationship. You admit to having a one night stand with her two years ago, but are furious. Ms. Bailey is now claiming you fathered her 11 month old son, which you say is impossible. Better grab your popcorn because the plot is about to twist and shout. Mr. Dark dives into the epic, slightly hilarious backstory of their love-hate relationship, starting from the fateful swipe right, their wild dreams of a sitcom worthy family life, and a dubious incident at a karaoke night that sparked his suspicions of Ms. Bailey's fidelity. These suspicions got a giant neon lit confirmation sign when Ms. Bailey's so-called friend spilled the beans, leading to their dramatic first act breakup. As we peel back the layers of this onion of a relationship, make sure you have tissues handy. For the tears of laughter or sorrow, we can't yet tell. Uh, I've been knowing Ms. Bailey for probably about seven or eight years, and she's had a history of things like this. And I'm just gonna uh, tell you a little bit about myself and Ms. Bailey. Um, we was in a relationship for about four years. Everything was okay, everything was pretty good. When I first met her, we had some good conversations about establishing us a family and probably having kids. She, we lived together at that time. I left to go out of town to do some work. I was working out of town, out of state. As a matter of fact, I went to Florida to do some work in Florida. But wait, there's a plot twist you didn't see coming. Despite their stormy split, Mr. Dark and Ms. Bailey found themselves in a It's Complicated sequel, leading to the unexpected plot twist of their child's conception. Mr. Dark, ever the skeptic, raises an eyebrow or two at Ms. Bailey's timeline of events, suggesting a paternity plot twist twist worthy of a daytime TV award. Brace yourselves because we're diving into a cloud of doubt thicker than fog on a San Francisco morning. I thought you were cheating on me. Okay. But... So you admit you cheated on him? I did. And so your best friend told on you? Yeah. What happened to your relationship with Miss Bailey at that point? I, I tried to work past it again because of the things that we had already discussed of us being a family and us trying to work things out, possibly us getting married or whatever the case may be, but I tried to work it past for about uh, approximately a year or so, but I just couldn't take it. I couldn't. I couldn't deal with it no more. Now, we delve into the disputed timeline of the pregnancy, with Mr. Dark doing some math that doesn't add up, hinting that the stork might have visited the wrong address due to the curious timing of their last tango and the baby's grand entrance. The plot thickens to the consistency of grandma's gravy, and we're here for it. And then that means the conception window would be February 17th, February 24th, 2016. And you said had... you all weren't intimate until March. Yes, ma'am. Right. And she had I had him early, like, I was due November 30th. Oh, what a 30th, okay. Yeah. So what you're saying, Mr. Dark, is this doesn't add up. No, ma'am, no kind of way. At the hospital, Ms. Bailey launches a full court press on Mr. Dark to sign the birth certificate, weaving in a spider's web of legal and emotional guilt, despite his ongoing paternity concert. I was there when he was born. The onesies and stuff that he took home, okay, so I bought why did for you them. Sign the birth the pampers, certificate? The... What are you feeling in this moment? Like, What's I don't... upsetting you? And the reason why I signed the birth certificate to answer your question is because you told me at the hospital that if I didn't sign it right then, then I no, wouldn't I have did another not, I didn't, sign No, I didn't. You didn't have to sign it. I didn't force you to sign it. You if signed I it on your own. If I didn't sign it, what you what was gonna happen? He won't have your last name, you won't get to sign it. Did you not say that? Okay, but... Okay. Ms. Bradley, Mr. Dark's latest flame, throws shade on the baby's family resemblance and brings her own bun in the oven into the timeline debate as Exhibit B. Gear up for a narrative somersault that'll make your head spin. Do you know who your child's biological father is? That yes. child, you do know? Yes, I do. So now, history is repeating itself in this moment for you. Yes, it is. If you want more episodes of Paternity Court, question then is were you intimate in February during the window of conception we outlined February 17th to February 24th.
four? No, ma'am. No. Both of you said no. Mm -hmm. Just when you thought we'd hit peak drama, the plot explodes. The air gets thick with accusations, past skeletons dance out of the closet, and both Mr. Dark and Ms. Bailey launch into a verbal fireworks display over fidelity, intentions, and who's the real MVP of messiness. We're reaching a fever pitch of confrontation, but the grand finale is still on the horizon. What would you like to tell the court? Well, first, my, in my personal opinion, I don't feel like the baby looks like. That's just, just my personal opinion. So you do not feel like there is a physical resemblance? No. What else do you know about the paternity well, situation? Well, my due date is November 19th. My conception date is February 24th. Cue the dramatic music for the moment of truth. The DNA results sweep in like a season finale twist. It has been determined by this court. Mr. Dark, you are the father. <laughs> Strap in, folks, because you're not gonna believe the roller coaster ride we're about to embark on. The gavel hits, and the legendary Judge Lake sets the stage for the showdown of the century, Hall v. Richards. In one corner, we have Ms. Hall, flanked by her no-nonsense mother, throwing the book at Mr. Richards for ducking out on daddy duties to little Damani, who's barely had time to see the world. And in the other, Mr. Richards, armed with a not-my-circus, not-my-monkey defense, claims Ms. Hall is just trying to snag him with a baby trap. Buckle up, buttercup, it's gonna be a wild ride. Ms. Hall, you and your mother are furious with the defendant because he denies your one-month-old son, Damani, and does nothing to support him. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Richards, you believe that Miss Hall is claiming you are the father because she wants to be with you. Uh, you say Miss Hall was thirsty for love and she needs to go uh -huh. find her child's real dad. Grab your popcorn because the circus is in town. Miss Hall takes the stand, pouring her heart out about Mr. Richards' ghosting act on their son. But wait, Mr. Richards fires back essentially calling Ms. Hall a love-starved, baby-crazy woman on a mission to anchor him down with fatherhood. The crowd's gasps and snickers underscore the melodrama, setting the stage for an epic soap opera twist. You think you've seen it all, but folks, we're just getting started. You haven't done anything for the child at all, no, admittedly. No, ma'am. And that's because you sincerely doubt paternity? Yes. What's the nature of this relationship? Tell me, what, what's, what was going on here? The baby's just one month old and everything fell apart already? What, what is going on? A couple years back, he broke my heart and I decided to give him another chance. You all were boyfriend and girlfriend a couple years ago, or you were just dating? We're yeah. dating. The plot thickens as we dive deep into the tempestuous ocean that is Miss Hall and Mr. Richards' past. Picture it, a whirlwind of breakups, makeups, and late night, you up texts leading to this very paternity drama. The term thirsty gets thrown around more than a football at a tailgate, unveiling a tangled web of seduction, rejection, and deception. The story's getting juicier, and trust me, you'll want to stick around for the plot twists. It wasn't just like I broke her heart in 2013. We had an issue. You. It was like broke both of our heart. I guess you could say that. This time, felt like maybe I was wrong for the way I ended things last time. So I gave her and another then, chance. So how did you reach out to her? Instagram DM, told her, hey, she replied. So how is she thirsty if he hit her up? Thirst is going both ways, ma'am. But I he would called admit, her thirsty, though. <laughs> I would admit how I was being thirsty ways, also. Thirsty. Okay. Things get real as we zero in on the conception conundrum. A timeline tighter than skinny jeans suggests Mr. Richards might be the dad, but whispers of betrayal and double-dealing class the waters. As we navigate this maze of maybe babies and could be cuckolds, brace yourself for a bombshell revelation that'll make your jaw drop. Because you just wanted to what? Date her again? Because you said to me you did it because you thought the last time it didn't really end right. Yeah, that was probably something I told her that she wanted to hear, Your Honor. No, you told me that. So don't tell me what I you mean, think she want to hear. Did you reach back out to her because you felt like you wanted to rekindle the relationship? Or did you reach back out to her because you just wanted to be involved with her for the time being? For the time being, Your Honor. Feel the tension as Ms. Hall recounts the emotional roller coaster of her pregnancy and the nerve-wracking moment she tells Mr. Richards. His skepticism is as thick as molasses, adding fuel to the fiery drama between them. But don't change the channel. The next episode in this saga promises more twists, turns, and jaw-dropping moments. It was like a fling. They stopped talking and then he came to spend time with her for her birthday and stayed a week. Then when he left, it was, oh, I don't want you no more and talking crap again. So you went to stay with her for a week, Mr. Richards, and then after that, you basically broke up with her again? No, At Your Honor. House. I think I was there for no longer than four days. I had a reason for breaking up with her. The day I was leaving, I go to the bus. It was about 9, 10 o'clock. I found out the bus didn't come to where I was going until 3 o'clock that afternoon. Both parties dig in their heels as the stakes skyrocket, lobbing accusations like grenades across the courtroom. Mr. Richards plays the infidelity card while Ms. Hall stands her ground, swearing by her loyalty. The drama hits fever pitch, setting the stage for an explosive revelation that'll have you on 
on the edge of your seat. So when I go outside to get the water, I look across the street, it's the same dude I see coming out the gate. So I'm like, whoa, I didn't say anything. And I probably spent the rest of that day on the couch till the bus came. Officially on the bus, I sent the message. Like I seen the messages in your phone, but I seen the guy across the street and that's where it ended. I told her to block my number. Had you all made some type of commitment to one another, what would give you the right to take her phone, look in it and then be angry if somebody was texting her? She's in her own deals. The air crackles with anticipation as the DNA results are unveiled. Been determined by this court. Mr. Richards, you are the father. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so white versus white, no pun intended. In a bold move to rescue her teetering marriage, Mrs. White decides to drop the bombshell about her colorful past and the paternity of her darling three-year-old Savannah. Just when you think it's going to be a straightforward case, buckle up. This ride's about to get wild. Ms. White, you've opened your case because your last and only way to save your marriage and family is to prove to your husband that he fathered your three-year-old daughter, Savannah. Yes, yeah, sir. Sure. You admit you've cheated. Picture the scene, the air thick with suspense. Mr. White's throwing side eyes, questioning if he's really Savannah's dad after Mrs. White's not-so-little oopsie of infidelity. He's on the brink of calling it quits if the DNA test doesn't say daddy. But folks, grab your popcorn because the drama train is leaving the station. Really, Mr. White, a divorce? Yes, ma'am. Explain. I, I just can't be with somebody that's gonna constantly cheat on me and have me raise somebody else's child. Savannah has the right to know and I have the right to know. And you love this little girl. Yes, I love her to death. Just when you thought it couldn't get any spicier, turns out Mrs. White has been playing away from home, not once, not twice, but multiple times since they said, I do. The stakes for the paternity test are sky high, folks. Strap in, this roller coaster's got loops. And now you just don't have any trust in this relationship. No, because from a week after we got married until February of this year, I've been catching her cheating constantly. A week after you got married? Yes, Your Honor. In a plot twist that has us reeling, Mrs. White spills the beans on her extracurricular activities, blaming a cocktail of feeling unloved and abandoned. She's pinning all her hopes on this paternity test to stitch her marriage back together. Spoiler alert, the drama llama has just entered the chat. Yes, our anniversary is in two days. And and so I'm, I want to make this right so we can better our marriage and just prove that Savannah is his. You are certain Savannah is your husband's biological child? Yes, Your Honor. Tell me about when you got married. Take me back to that time. I moved in with them after a month of being together. Probably eight months later, I ended up getting pregnant with our first child. Just when you think you've seen it all, the Whites take us on a flashback to their whirlwind romance and quickie wedding, with Mrs. White owning up to her wanderings but holding on to hope for a fairy tale ending. Folks, don't touch that dial. There's more juice see gossip ahead. We ended up splitting up and I was over at my mom's house and he said the only way I could come back into the house is if I was to admit everything and be honest. And he let you back home after that? Yes, Your Honor. Take me to that day. I can't imagine this happening. I was hurt and I was pissed off, but and at the same time, it was kind of a little relief because I knew for a fact that it was actually happening. It wasn't just, oh, it's an assumption. I don't know for a fact. Just when you're ready to throw in the towel on love, bam. Texts and receipts of Mrs. White's adventures in Cheatingland surface, shaking the very foundations of trust and marriage stability. But wait, there's more heartbreak on the horizon. Separate parents, but we still sit there and have a civil relationship for the kids. Do you have any other reason to believe that your wife cheated other times? Uh, I have text messages proof right here of the most recent is Valentine's Day. She went to another man's house while I'm sitting at the house with the kids. Well, that's because you didn't even get me anything, and you were just yelling at me. You, you were treating me like crap and was gonna go to a friend's house. Brace yourselves for a scandalous revelation that'll make your jaw hit the floor. More damning evidence of Mrs. White's indiscretions floods in, including some NSFW Valentine's Day surprises. But folks, the real showstopper is yet to grace the stage. Your wife says, LMAO, could you do that for me? Miss White, why are you so quiet? Why, why are you texting your ex-boyfriend these things? Because he don't treat me right. Like Your body is naked wishing you were in the bed. Which bed? Your husband's bed? Yeah. Mr. White, you submitted another text message? Oh, this is another guy. This is not the ex-boyfriend's name. Oh.
Get ready for the tearjerker moment as Mrs. White makes a heartfelt plea for her marriage, shedding light on the tangled web of emotions, the undeniable bond with their children, and her vow to turn over a new leaf. The finale is looming, but it's not all rainbows and butterflies. Miss White, why are you entertaining all these men on text? Because he doesn't show me anything. Always with the He's pivot. not there Always for me. Always pivoting. You're trying to put it off on me. How you expect me to treat you the way you want to be treated when you're sitting here sexting other people and doing all this other stuff? Somebody, something they want when I'm getting treated like I'm just a piece of crap. In a finale that'll have you on the edge of your seat, the envelope with the paternity results is opened, and lo and behold... It has been determined by this court. Mr. White, you are her father. Mr. Peterson's living his life, probably thinking about whether to grill or barbecue this weekend, when BAM! Mrs. Peterson drops the bombshell that their family tree might just have a few unexpected branches. Their 22-year-old daughter, LaJoya Jackson, might have more dads in the mix than a sitcom from the 90s. Mrs. Peterson, in a plot twist worthy of a soap opera marathon, reveals a blast. From her past in the form of an affair right around the time LaJoya was conceived, but here's the kicker. She's hell-bent on proving that Mr. Peterson is the real daddy-o, turning what should be a straightforward lineage into a family bush of biblical proportions. Mr. Peterson, just one month ago, your world came crumbling down when your wife, Mrs. Peterson, revealed she had been keeping a secret. 22-year-old daughter, LaJoya Jackson, may not be your biological daughter. Mrs. Peterson, you admit that 22 years ago, during the window of conception, you had sex with another man, Mr. Beckham, but you want to prove today in court that Mr. Peterson is Ms. Jackson's father. Yes, Your Honor. Oh, buckle up and pop the popcorn, because Mrs. Peterson is kicking the drama up several notches to a level even reality TV might blush at. Just when you thought dinner could only be about passing the peas and dodging personal questions, she pulls a move straight out of a daytime TV special. She's not just inviting potential dads to a guess-who's-your-daddy dinner party, she's turning the dining room into the set of a paternity test reveal, but with more appetizers. Yep, it's like being on a game show, where the grand prize is a deep dive into your family's gene pool, and the consolation prize is unlimited access to the family therapist. Who knew that family gatherings could also double as a live-action Maury Povich episode. A month ago, I was previously in court because I had a similar situation. With my child, father, with my boyfriend, I lied and told him that he was not the father. I didn't like having that between us, and I came clean to him and asked her, do you want to just go and do it so that, you know, just for my clarity, because I'm feeling some type of way. And she had never admitted that there was a possibility of one guy potentially being my father. And then I found out there were multiple guys that could possibly be my father. Just when you think it couldn't get more complicated, the court prepares to introduce Mr. Beckham, another potential father, shedding light on Mrs. Peterson's past and the complicated web of relationships that have led to the current paternity dispute. It feels like the season finale of a soap opera, where the writers have just thrown in a new character for the shock value. The courtroom holds its breath, half expecting Maury Povich to walk in with the envelope. You won't believe Mr. Beckham's story, but don't go anywhere, because what comes next is even more jaw-dropping. Would you have ever said anything if this man had not approached her a year ago? Yes, yeah, she did. Sure. She did, Your Honor. It's a potential that somebody else could be my father because I never thought that this could happen to me. I just wake up and be like, oh, dad, make me some cereal. Not, oh, this might not be my dad. And now if he feels as if he can't take this and I'm not his child, he can walk away at any moment. He has no ties or connections to me or my children if he's not my father. The air is so thick with tension, you could cut it with a butter knife or, in LaJoya's case, with the sharp edges of a family tree gone wild. As she lays out her feelings of betrayal and abandonment, it's like watching someone navigate a minefield in clown shoes. Awkward, painful, but strangely captivating. When she whips out that chart of potential fathers, it's less, who's your daddy, and more, who's not your daddy, in a plot twist bingo that has everyone on the edge of their seats. The bombshell moment that follows is so shocking, it makes reality TV blush with envy. And just when you think the roller coaster has come to a stop, it lurches forward again, proving life in LaJoya's world is more twisted than a pretzel in a yoga class. When did you find out that you could potentially be her biological father? Um, I found out like about two weeks ago. She contacted me through Facebook and basically she had once told me once before that, you know, she could have been pregnant or whatever, so, but I had no move. But basically, you know, we had met at a party, you know, we was drinking, everything, there was a lot going but on. But drinking that mean that you couldn't have been the father? Right, exactly. Try to pursue and seeing what was going on. But Basically, With, at the time, I was young, I was scared. So. so when you grew up, why didn't you try to contact her like, oh, let me see what she did with the child or anything?
you're not going to believe what happens next. The court proceeds to reveal the DNA test results, first clearing Mr. Beckham as the father, followed by the shocking revelation that Mr. Peterson is also not LaJoya's biological father. The news devastates the family, leaving them to grapple with their shattered relationships and identities. Meanwhile, the judge can't help but wonder if Maury Povich is available for a guest appearance to liven things up. But just when you think it's over, there's more. The next clip will leave you questioning everything you thought you knew. This is Peterson say to you, I'm pregnant and you're the father. Yeah, somewhat like that. She said it. I could be the father. You could be. You testified that you did not tell him you were pregnant. I didn't. So is he remembering the story wrong? Yes, sir. Your Honor. So he's remembering it wrong or you're remembering it wrong? Because to me, neither one of y'all got y'all story straight. I said that we're not liars. Neither one of us are the person that we were. I mean, I know you and grew I've up. And I've been your mother every day then. since then. You have been my mother, but you've been lying to me about who my father is for 22 years. In the wake of the family drama, the Petersons are hit with a twist straight out of a daytime TV show. The results are in. It has been determined by this court. Mr. Beckham, you are not her father. It has been determined by this court, Mr. Peterson, you are not her father. Oh my God, are you serious? Really, Mom? Miss Manship reveals her lifelong search for her biological father, a journey that began at age 10 when she discovered the man she believed was her father was not. She shares her exhaustive and fruitless efforts to find her biological father, Mr. Lop, including online searches and inquiries in Arkansas, where he was last known to be. This leads to the court revealing they have located Mr. Lop, who was about to meet Miss Manship and her mother for the first time in over 30 years. As if the story wasn't bizarre enough, Miss Manship humorously recounts the time she mistook a mannequin at a department store for Mr. Lop, leading to an awkward apology to a very confused sales assistant. She jokes about considering a DNA test with a suspiciously familiar-looking pizza delivery guy. There's also the time she got a lead from a psychic named Madame Fifi, who, despite her crystal ball, could only predict Miss Manship's future cat ownership, not her father's whereabouts. Just you wait. The story takes an emotional turn next. Brace yourself. The emotional roller coaster is just beginning. Miss Manship, at the age of 10, you were shocked and devastated to learn that your dad was not your biological father. That began your 20-year search to find the man your mother claims is your father. After your exhaustive search to find him, you came up with nothing. Just when you thought it couldn't get any more complicated, the focus shifts to Miss Manship's mother, Miss Lutman, who provides background on her relationship with Mr. Lop and the circumstances surrounding Miss Manship's conception and birth. This segment reveals a tangled web of relationships, assumptions, and missed opportunities for truth until the DNA test when Miss Manship was 10 years old. The story unravels like a soap opera with less amnesia and more reality checks. Miss Lutman, in a tell-all mood, spills the beans with the kind of enthusiasm usually reserved for sharing hot gossip over a fence with a neighbor. It's like unraveling a family sweater knitted with threads of intrigue, drama, and a dash of humor, thanks to Aunt Gertrude's questionable recollection of events. Hang on, the revelations from the DNA test are about to shake things up. Me and my ex got back together. About a month later, I started getting symptoms of getting pregnant. My ex, so I figured it was my ex's baby. When you found out you were pregnant, you thought it was your ex's child. I, yeah, I just figured it was my ex's because I'd be in a month later, you know, and be with him. But. And so you had the baby, and you and your ex raised the baby up until she was 10. That's when she said she was told. Yeah. And so when you got the paternity result, you immediately knew, well, if it's not my ex, it is Mr. Lop. Yes. Just as everyone starts to settle down from the high of the discovery, a distant relative, twice removed and known for crashing family gatherings, enters with a karaoke machine in tow. Looks like we're going to find out if poor dancing is the only talent running in the family. He announces, sparking a mix of excitement and dread. Mr. Lop, ever the enthusiast, sees this as a challenge and immediately starts warming up his vocal cords, which, to the surprise of many, resemble the sound of a cat in a disagreement with a vacuum cleaner. As Miss Manship braces herself for what could only be described as an epic display of inherited lack of musical talent, she can't help but think that at least life's about to get a whole lot more interesting. When he said that, your head just dropped. What are you thinking in this moment, hearing that? I'm just hoping that everything I've been told is true because if it is, I'm the only one out there that he has. So I've believed that he's been my father so long that I actually named my youngest son after him. You did? I did. Oh, it's beautiful. <laughs> I named him Dallas Trent because I didn't want to miss the opportunity if he was to have, what, have one of my children have his name in it. I haven't been married I, in hopes that maybe one day I did find him, I'd have that one moment left with him. The results are in, and they're wild. It has been determined by this court. 
Mr. Lau, you are the father. Ready for a whirlwind of a tale that'll have you scratching your head and chuckling at the same time? So, here goes. Ms. Brown and her mom. Alicia were just chilling when out of the blue, Mr. Hampton shows up claiming to be Ms. Brown's long-lost dad. It's like something out of a mystery book, but with real people and way less pausing for dramatic effect. This whole situation kicks off a wild ride into the world of family secrets and wait, what? Moments. And trust me, it only gets wackier from here. You stand before the court with your mother, Alicia Brown, turned upside down when you were contacted by a man whom you've never even heard of claiming to be your birth father. Now that man, Mr. Hampton, is waiting uh, in our courtroom hallway. Just when you're catching your breath, boom, the plot thickens. Mr. Hampton swings in with a tale that sounds straight out of a movie. He's been looking for his daughter for 20 years, convinced Ms. Brown is his. The backstory with Ms. Brown's mom, total soap opera material, but with more feels and less fake gasping. I couldn't take you at the time. I had to go back to Seattle. I cried every minute on the plane. Do you have any proof of this. The, the toys first uh, bought her before the, before they left, Your Honor. Jerome, hand me the evidence, please. So this is a picture, the person, Miss Brown's birth mother. Yes, yes, Your Honor. And she's pregnant. Yes, Your Honor. Next up, Alicia Brown, a.k.a. Kayla's adoptive supermom, grabs the mic. She's got a story that's more tangled than your headphones in your pocket. Amidst a sea of adoption papers and legal stuff, she drops a bomb about Kayla's bio dad that's juicier than a reality TV show finale. This saga's peeling off drama layers like an onion, and we're all here for the next review. They had me paying child support, Your Honor. They, uh, let they, me see they, that paperwork. They knew. That Jerome, doesn't make sense. They, you were paying child support. Pay child support? They know. Yeah, you do have to have a paternity affidavit. Well, then they must have proved that I was your father then. The paperwork dates that there is an order for child support in Alaska and that the order names you as the father. I mean, my so mom, listen. my biological mom has, I have biological siblings that are literally consecutive years under me. Hold on to your seats because Mr. Hampton's back at it with the drama. Big time. He's laying out his feelings for Kayla like he's gunning for an award, even though they might not be related by blood. It's like he's the main character in a tearjerker, making us all reach for the tissues. The suspense is building up to a twist that's going to smack us in the feels. And just when you think it can't get more intense, brace yourself. There's more to come. I've gone through a lot the last 20 years, Your Honor. This is my life, Your Honor. I I've made some, some bad choices, Your Honor, but I've never run from any of my children, Your Honor. And that's why I'm, I'm here today right here in court because I felt all the hurt, everything, Your I Honor. see your heart is breaking, I really do. And just when you think you've got it all figured out, plot twist. In the case of Brown v. Hampton, pertaining to 20-year-old Kayla Brown, Mr. Hampton, you have desperately waited for this answer. You are not her father. Can you believe the turn of events? Phelan Hannon reveals on her mother's deathbed, she was told that David Dorsey, a man she has never met, is her biological father. She comes to court to prove paternity and seek closure, marking her first ever encounter with Dorsey. Phelan couldn't help but wonder if this mystery dad came with a handbook on how to deal with dramatic revelations 101, or at least a sorry I missed your life greeting card. Just when you think it can't get more dramatic, keep watching. Hannon, you grew up believing one man was your father until the age of 13 when he said, I am not your daddy. Your mother then told you on her deathbed that another man, the defendant David Dorsey, is your biological father. You are here to prove paternity and gain closure, and you have never spoken to or laid eyes on Mr. Dorsey, but will meet him for the very first time. So, you're all set for the big daddy-daughter dance, dreaming of that perfect fatherly figure to twirl you around, when suddenly, bam, the man you've been calling dad hits you with a sorry kiddo, not your actual dad. It's like gearing up to meet Santa Claus, only to catch your Uncle Rick in the red suit sneaking cookies at midnight. Talk about a plot twist. You don't know her. No, I don't. Miss Hannon, do you have a picture of your mother with you? Show that picture to Mr. Dorsey. Do you remember that woman? No, ma'am. Miss Hannon, what have you been told about your mother's relationship with Mr. Dorsey? Um, from our conversations that we used to have, it was like they talked, like they weren't in a relationship, I guess, like they talked here and there. I knew that he worked at a fast food restaurant. He was a manager at a fast food restaurant from her and, you know, talked, mingled here and there. Were you a manager at a fast food restaurant? No, ma'am, but I worked at a fast food restaurant. You worked at one? Yes, ma'am. In the latest Who's Your Daddy roller coaster episode, we've hit a twist that's soap opera worthy. Mr. Hampton isn't Kayla's biological dad after all. It's like we're dealing with the world's most stubborn
stubborn Christmas lights. Just when you think you've untangled everything, another knot appears. As we pick our jaws up from the ground, it's clear this family saga has more surprises in store. Keep your eyes peeled, because this ride's loop-de-loop -loop has more twists coming. Just when we thought we'd seen it all, the story peels back another layer, gearing up to wow us again. Strap in, because this tale is about to throw another wild pitch, adding even more spice to an already zesty story. As you listen to Mr. Dorsey consistently say, I don't even know this one. I've never even met her. Or in your heart, you do believe that is your father and this is your sister. It makes me feel torn because he says he doesn't remember, but who all remembers every white not stand I didn't have when I was a kid? So I can't fault him for saying he don't remember. And maybe he don't remember that fling. He just wasn't doesn't the remember best that. I'm, I don't remember having sex with your mom. I'm sorry. That's fine. What was it that made you want to come today? I mean, if you never met this woman and you have never had sex with her and you don't know what is going on, why did you come? I want closure for violence. Just when you thought daytime TV had maxed out on drama, the courtroom takes it up a notch. The judge, with a flair for the theatrical, leans forward, about to drop the kind of bombshell that makes soap operas look like documentaries. Mr. Dorsey, you are not the father. <laughs> Hold your horses because the episode... And then, boom, they roll out a calendar to map out Ms. Johnson's love life showdown between the two gents, with dates overlapping faster than you can say Maury Povich. Ms. Johnson cracks a joke about making Excel her new BFF for tracking her love interests. And oh boy, you won't believe the twist that's about to drop. You could have conceived. Yes. Out of the blue, Ms. Johnson drops a bomb about not knowing who the real daddy is, turning her pregnancy into a guessing game that's more Maury than Maury itself, minus the screaming matches and with more spreadsheet action. Hang on to your hats, because the next part will flip Cue dramatic music as Mr. Anderson's son steps up, throwing everyone for a loop with claims of secret family meetups orchestrated by Ms. Johnson. This soap opera level plot thickens, making everyone double check their family trees. And if you thought that was bonkers, the next scene is. I'm scared that my husband, this is my whole marriage is riding on this. My marriage is going to be over. A lot of stuff it'll change. We'll, no, we'll like see. Said, a lot okay. of stuff it'll we'll change. First of all, like I said, your name, your your name. Name. it's on there now. Okay. Do you all want to keep arguing back and forth, or do you want to hear right, the let's, result? Let's get these. And then, like a clown popping out of a tiny car, the DNA test results burst onto the scene, throwing everyone for a loop you didn't see coming. It has been determined that her biological father is and brings her mother to court, turning what you'd expect to be a dull day of legal proceedings into an episode of Who's Your Daddy that no one signed up for. This moment is like the season opener of a drama series you can't miss, showcasing the roller coaster of emotions and the tangled web of family secrets. Ms. Munsell, dropping a paternity bombshell with all the grace of a reality TV star, adds a layer of intrigue and suspense to the family saga. And just when you think you've seen it all, the next chapter promises even more twists and turns. Miss Ferguson, you've brought your mother to court today because you were recently shocked to learn that Ken Ferguson, who raised you your entire life, may not be your biological father. Ms. Munsell, you acknowledge that you finally confessed to your daughter that you slept with more than one man at the time of her conception. You too are unsure what today's results will reveal. You repair the relationship with your daughter. Alicia Ferguson, feeling more betrayed than someone who finds out their favorite series finale was just a dream, airs her grievances. It's like watching a live feed from the Jerry Springer show, minus the chair throwing. As she navigates this emotional minefield, we get VIP tickets to the Ferguson family's dysfunction junction. The revelation of Alicia's feelings of neglect and betrayal is like adding a plot twist to an already spicy telenovela. If you're intrigued now, wait until you see what's coming next. Please go check on Ms. Munsell and Ms. Ferguson. Yes, ma'am. I need to understand. You were with the stepfather. Your stepfather. Yes. And you finally just said to him. Yes, I let it all out. Everything I was keeping secrets from him. Yes, I was supposed to be her little secret keeper. You know, I was supposed to be the only one to know that she was sleeping around. And okay. I couldn't handle it anymore. Ken Ferguson, who's pretty sure he's Alicia's bio dad, shares his doubts about paternity thanks to Diana Munsell's past escapades. As he spills the tea on Diana's infidelity and the heartache buffet it served, it's like peeking into a soap opera, reminding us that adulting is hard, especially with kids caught in the crossfire. This moment is like a spotlight on the drama and uncertainty cheating brings to the family dinner table, with a side of emotional turmoil. The story takes an even more compelling turn in the next scene. Can you step up, please? You thought, Miss Ferguson, this young woman was your daughter. Yeah, I believe she was my daughter. Why do you have the doubt? When I first met her at a party, I found out after this, because that's when we met. She uh, slept with four guys that night. It was four my Four guys in one night? Yes. 
one night. Diana Munsell tries to slide into the apology DMs, hoping to patch things up with Alicia. It's like watching someone trying to glue a shattered vasey back together. Messy, complicated, and with sharp edges. This part is a real-life lesson in saying my bad and the Herculean effort to mend fences, especially when you've turned the backyard into a war zone. It's about the bumpy road to forgiveness and the yearning for a hallmark-worthy mother-daughter reunion. The climax of this saga is up next, and it's something you won't want to miss. And admit to my face what she did was wrong, and I shouldn't have seen it, and I shouldn't have this feeling. So are you willing to give your mother a chance to apologize today? No matter what the result, will you give her a chance? I, would. I mean, as she stood here today, she appeared to be extremely emotional. It's because she's never admitted. When the paternity test results finally hit the scene, and just when you think it's all over, life yells encore. Because let's face it, there's always another surprise scene waiting in the wings. When it comes to Alicia Ferguson, Mr. Ferguson, you are her father. <laughs> the case kicks off with everyone throwing their hats into the ring, where Ms. Allen makes her grand entrance, claiming Mr. Childs is the father of her daughter, Ms. Baylor. Mr. Childs and his wife, on the other hand, are in the denial camp, shaking their heads faster than a bobblehead on a bumpy road. Just when you think it can't get any wilder, the next segment proves you wrong. Ms. Allen, you say that after a brief affair with Mr. Childs, you discovered you were pregnant with your daughter, Ms. Baylor. You say Mr. Childs acknowledged paternity until his wife convinced him otherwise. You intend to prove that Mr. Childs is, in fact, your daughter's father. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. The paternity dispute intensifies with Ms. Allen and Mr. Childs, sharing their versions of the pregnancy announcement and ensuing conflicts, illustrating the complexity and emotional toll of the situation. In an unexpected twist, Mr. Childs admits his initial reaction was to check if storks were indeed involved. Given the bewildering circumstances, Ms. Allen, not to be outdone, claims she considered naming the baby, Who's Your Daddy?, to keep the mood light amidst the tension. What happens next will surely catch you off guard. You say you got pregnant, and once you got pregnant, did you tell Mr. Childs, I'm pregnant, and I think it could be yours? Actually, it was rumors, so he came you to me. You spread rumors. People are coming okay, to me. Okay, if, I have, if I had me. family, if I had family, whatever, but... Why aren't you telling the truth? You didn't know who the father was. Well, you, you knew that you from day that, one. You were telling that... You knew that from that's day one. That's not what you were saying, though. The you rumor that, that you put out there... One. Various testimonies and accusations are exchanged, including Ms. Allen's admittance to testing another man for paternity, shedding light on the confusion and mistrust surrounding Ms. Baylor's paternity. The plot thickens as a confused pizza delivery guy is also brought in for questioning after showing up at the wrong time too many times, making everyone question the pizza's role in this intricate drama. The next piece of the puzzle is even more bewildering. That is true. Tell the court about that. That is true, but that was somebody that I wasn't even messing with him. This was somebody that you came Why would you test it? someone you are Aren't messing with because this is, this, he, honor, she he, was fishing. He for, came out. He came out and asked me, and he said, "You know, I was messing with your mom around the time. I wanted, I wanted to get a DNA test with you." Okay, someone reached out to you, yes. Ms. Baylor, and said, "I think I may be your father." The emotional and logistical challenges of establishing paternity are discussed, including past attempts to connect and acknowledge paternity, the role of child support, and the enduring hope for resolution and family bonds. Amidst the serious discussions, a light-hearted moment arises when someone suggests using a magic eight ball for paternity answers, leading to laughs and a brief respite from the heavy atmosphere. But wait, there's a twist coming that will change everything. She knew I told her, sit down and told her the whole story. Yeah, she told I, me after. She, she didn't like I'm, tell me before, but she told me after the fact when my stepdad did say that. Okay. No, she sit down and talked to me when I brought it to her attention. Like, and I then, don't know what's going on. I'm confused. I know, I'm honey. I'm confused too. Please. I know, and that's why I'm trying to understand this. At the end of the day, you have a right to understand exactly. what happened. 11 I, years ago, you would have been nine, babe. Baylor. Yes, ma'am. So you made an attempt yes, to meet Miss yes, Baylor at nine years old. Yes, ma'am. Final arguments and evidence, like the eyebrow-raising fact that Mr. Childs's biological kids seem to have an extra finger, talk about a handy inheritance, are laid out, ratcheting up the suspense for those DNA results. Everyone's on the edge of their seat, popcorn in hand, wondering if they're about to witness a real-life plot twist. The climax of this story is something you won't want to miss. Uh, a DNA test? Nothing. No. All right? Your Honor, she just made me feel like she wanted me to be the 
father by name. So if someone asked her what? who Shy's father was, she could say me. You know, Your Honor, Please. I'm not being funny or anything, but Please. okay, I, I, I was a good catch. I'm not gonna lie, I was a good catch. <laughs> so, so I can understand, you know, where she was coming from then. I would have made sure she was fine. I would have made sure the child was fine. All that would have been good. The DNA test results come in hotter than a pot of tea on the stove, revealing Mr. Childs's. When it comes to 20-year-old Shinesha Baylor, it has been determined by this court. Mr. Child, you are not the father. I'm very sorry, Miss Baylor. It's okay, Yana. You know, at the same time. It's okay, honey. It's okay. Okay, so Judge Lake, who's clearly had her morning coffee, greets the crowd with the enthusiasm of a host at a game show and dives straight into the juicy drama of Hicks versus Narvez. Mr. Hicks, who seems as confused about baby names as he is about paternity, has dragged his ex-wife to court for a DNA test on their bundle of joy, Yazalan, amidst their tumultuous split. He's visibly flabbergasted, probably wondering if Maury Povich does group discounts. Brace yourselves. The plot thickens. In a moment, you won't believe. Just you wait. The next scene will have your jaw on the floor. You have brought your ex-wife to court and requested a paternity test to prove that you are indeed the biological father of her baby. Is it Yazeline? Yazeline. Yazeline. Beautiful. Who was born during your marriage. You state who are the only father she has known from cutting the cord in the hospital mm -hmm. to signing her birth certificate and are shocked and dismayed that your wife is now disputing Absolutely. that she is yours. You won't believe what happens next. Mr. Hicks, channeling every soap opera character ever, shares his heartbreak and disbelief, painting a picture of a world turned upside down faster than a pancake at IHOP. Miss Narvaez, doubling down on her soap opera villain persona, insists that Mr. Hicks playing dad is as likely as finding a unicorn at a pet store. The drama thickens, ensuring the court's popcorn supply is going to take a hit. Next up, an emotional roller coaster that will have you on the edge of your seat. You're not ready for what's coming up. How I was deceived is that she said that the baby, I believe that the baby is mother. And you try to say that the baby isn't ours, I don't believe that. You know? You need to believe because she's not yours. No. Look at the baby. Look at her. She's white. She looks like me. She looks nothing like you. You're you hearing she looks stories. Like it's me? irrelevant the stories you that you're hearing. She looks nothing like me. She looks, she looks nothing, nothing like, you. like you. How are you going to say that? She, might, she doesn't have to here? look like me. She's mine. Is... Dad be your husband if you're in a marriage? Mm. No, Your Whoa. Honor. Get ready for a plot twist that will turn everything on its head. In a twist worthy of an Oscar, Mr. Hicks gives a passionate defense of his dad credentials, arguing that fatherhood isn't just about DNA. DNA, but about who's there to check for monsters under the bed. His heartfelt speech about the true essence of being a dad adds a layer of depth to the circus, reminding everyone that amidst the chaos, there's a real family story unfolding. And just when you thought it couldn't get any more intense, hold on, the next revelation is going to flip everything upside down. Right? Yeah. The baby's name is Yazelin Savannah Janae Hicks, not Osorio, Hicks. Hicks. <laughs> The father, why did you let me cut the cord? Why did you give the baby my last name? Why? Exactly why, why I told why? you to sign why? your rights over. Have your last name back. We don't want it. Hold on to your popcorn. This next part is a doozy. Carla Hicks, a relative, jumps into the fray with allegations of Miss Narvaez's infidelity and hold on to your hats, possibly moonlighting as a lady of the night. This spicy addition throws a wrench into the already tangled web of the case, making everyone question what other skeletons might be dancing in Miss Narvaez's closet. This revelation sends shockwaves through the courtroom, turning what was already a circus into a full-blown reality TV drama, minus the commercial breaks and dramatic background music. But wait, there's more drama ahead that will leave you speechless. Trust me, you'll want to see what's next. Was there anything she was hiding from you when she met you? No, man. So no. everything about you know her what? life she, she told? She told me she didn't have no sexual contact with him. She wasn't living with him. Even her mom told me she wasn't living with him. <laughs> she was lying. You know so when you met Ms. Navarro, you knew she was a married woman, but she just was not living with her husband. That's what you heard. That's what she That's told what you me. were told. You believe you are the father. I am the father. Because father's not the only one that, that has them and leaves them. Father's the one that spends time and quality time and be there for them and tell them what's right and what's wrong. This next moment is the big one, folks, as Judge Lake gears up to unveil the DNA test results. You could cut the tension with a knife, assuming you could find one strong enough. It's the moment of truth, the peak of the roller coaster, the final countdown. Choose your metaphor. They all fit. This is where hopes and fears collide, creating a suspenseful climax that has everyone on the edge of their seats. Popcorn forgotten. The anticipation is palpable, with the potential to either mend hearts or break them into a million pieces, proving once and for all that daytime TV has nothing on real-life drama. What happens next will redefine everything you've just seen. Just when you think you've seen it all, the story takes an even crazier turn. I'm ready for results. Um, I 
dating Mr. Hicks is that because this child was born during your marriage, you are presumed to be the father. You are the legal father of the child. You signed the birth certificate. You were there for the birth. Most men would come into court trying to rebut that presumption, but you've come into this court because you want it validated. This part is truly unforgettable. The bombshell that Mr. Hicks isn't Yazalan's real dad turns the courtroom into a roller coaster of emotions, tossing in a salad of feelings, tangled relationships, and the messy spaghetti of paternity issues. Miss Narvaez's stone cold non apology and Judge Lake's stern wag of the finger bring a spicy dish of moral and ethical quandaries to the table. It's like watching a soap opera, but with legal documents and less hair pulling. And let's not forget the awkward silence that followed, so thick you could cut it with a gavel. The next turn of events is something no one could have predicted. Oh, but it gets even wilder from here, if you can believe it. It has been determined by this court, Mr. Hicks, you are not oh. Thank her you. father. Oh. You should have just signed your name and you would have looked stupid. Did you I not tell you to sign your rights over? Now, even more right now. I hope you know you just busted your own bubble. It's all Whatever. good. Okay. As a woman, at least say, Robert, I'm sorry. Sorry for what? For him you playing video games? Sorry for what? For being a liar, for being a manipulator, for me on your own. Born child, when you knew he wasn't the father, you were looking for a substitution for the one you couldn't be with. <laughs> then, boom, Mr. Osorio is. Mr. Osorio, you also agreed and submitted to a DNA test. You are her father. Take the silence in the courtroom right now. Just take it in, and there is a lesson in this moment. You believe this baby was yours, you stated that to this court.